Hello and welcome to me showing off uh, another one of the Hoseki no Kuni books. This one's cool because it's reflective. Um, it kind of gives like locker school vibes because they're supposed to look like stickers and it's very interesting and cool. I don't know which way it's supposed to open actually because most Japanese books that are read this way are usually open this way but the title is on this side so I assume that this is the front but I could be wrong. Um, there's also stickers here, which I'm never going to actually use, and uh, I assume they put the stickers in the back. So I think this is the front, so we'll start from here going this way. Um, this is a, the this book titled Love, Freedom, Hell. <laughs> lovely, lovely title. Um, this was released with volume 10, uh, and it's, I, it's a interesting aesthetic for a book. It's a lot different from the other art book. Well, the other art book was kind of normal. Um, and then, of course, the, I guess these two also count as art books, but they're hardcover and like more lore related, which is why these ones are cool. But uh, this, they're all cool. I don't know what I'm saying. But this is another one of just filled with art. And it's a lot more like experimental, if that makes sense. Like it's a, a lot more like less concept art and kind of more just like really interesting like artworks like he bears a boss's uh, lovely head with the pearl and then there's some shells like obviously going back to the amber the you know the other race that is barely talked about some flowers some clouds in the background and it's all just cool there's karen gorm over here um and these are a bunch of the plants i'm guessing that this is there is a part when they're on the moon where there's a bunch of plants and that's related to the like lore bit of the like thing with the city where the city keeps regenerating into new stuff so i'm guessing that the moon is very colorful and so this is probably what a colored page would probably look like of the more interesting settings on the moon but we but of course it's the manga is a color we don't get to see this but it's very interesting how this is probably what it would look like this looks very cool Here's one of Cinnabar and flowers as well. Now, Cinnabar really likes flowers. Sorry if my hand gets away in some of the pages. Now, Cinnabar really likes flowers, so I find it interesting that um, here in this page there's flowers in between, and then there's, of course, Mercury slipping out of Cinnabar's shoes. And, of course, um, Cinnabar has laces on their shoes because um, the Mercury makes any of the other types of shoes the gems wear slip off, which is a very interesting lore tidbit. Um, and yeah, and this one's just cool art and it has a very like cool, what is that called? Eye path? Yeah. I just love how a lot of them are double pages, which double page spreads are great. And here's a little comic. Um, some of the translations for the comics are on the wiki page, uh, but um, the basically the gist of this one is this is um, Sapphire. I assume this is Ruby. That would make sense. The hair is red. That's what I'm assuming. Um, and they're trying to help Rutile fix Padparaja, and Rutile's just trying to get them to go away and telling them to be quiet. It's interesting that they're trying to help, because maybe that indicates that, like, at the beginning Rutile had help. And, um, uh, yeah, and so, it's funny. Um, so just, just mentioning their names, and then Sapphire's asking, like, or, like, oh, this one isn't that good, or it's not that well, and Rutile's saying that Sapphire is the one who did that one. Oh, it, they're talking about the color combination here. Uh, Rutile's saying that the color isn't right to put into Paparaja, and Ruby was saying that Sapphire um, picks colors that fit better with Sapphire. Um, and R Ruby is wanting to look but uh, Rutile's just saying for them to go fight. And then at the end it says, uh, Rutile's just yelling at Paparaja to wake up. Um, but yeah, this is, it's interesting because we don't get to see these two characters. And this must be from way before, like before Foss even existed. So it's cool to see like stuff about characters that existed before. And especially like what the dynamic was before then. Because like Rutile isn't wearing a lab coat here. So it might be before they even became like the full-fledged doctor role in the society. So... That's just interesting. And then here is um Ventricosis and her brother. Um yeah. Let's see. And there's a lot of small comics in here. Let's see, what's the next one? Uh challenge. It's English. We can read it. Cool. Um here we have all the doggos. 
and the characters that we all know. And then Foss and Pearls on the side. Now, Pearls are very much a Lunarian thing. That's, like, the thing they really like to make, so it's interesting. I think these are all the... No, there's some moon... But yeah, it's just the characters. Foss isn't a part of it, though. Um, here's cards. Uh, a version of the card the card game. Uh, here's Karen Gorm and Ac Acnea. I don't know how to say a lot of the characters' names, I'm gonna be honest. Um... But yeah, this is cool. And see, like, this is probably, like, supposed to supposedly the Moon Society in the back. And I bet it's very colorful, like, actually. So it's interesting, like, that we get to see some of that with these colored shots. Um, the Moon is actually made out of bismuth, which is very interesting and would look probably really cool colored, like I said before. Um, and I actually didn't realize that when reading it, but when I had one of my friends read it and they are much more of, like, a geology nerd they're like oh is that bismuth i'm like i have no idea <laughs> but yeah um with this one it's kind of like an illusion of choice like comic because uh red barrel's asking um benito um, i know their name i just always say it wrong and give them a nickname so you know but uh red barrel's asking them like which they want uh ben benito wants the more simple one and uh Red Barrel's like, just as I thought, uh, thank you, and then makes the more complicated one. So then Red Barrel asks him again, uh, which one do you want? And then Minato picks the more complicated one, because hoping that Red Barrel will make the other one, and then Red Barrel just makes the more complicated one. Um, with this one, uh, Diamond is, uh, asking, uh, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 Simon's asking if Barbado likes uh Acnea and then uh he he's just he basically just says like, yeah, they're friends, you know. Uh on like a base level. Or or like Bird is like, Oh, I don't know what you're asking or like in your sense and then uh Diamond's just asking if they're friends and Barbado's like, Yeah, I guess we're friends and then <laughs> Diamond asks Acnea or Acnea, and then Acnea gives, like, a very, like, um, you know, we're colleagues sort of thing, or, like, uh, he's my, a very capable subordinate is what one, the translation on the wiki, I think, says, and then, uh, he's like, but yeah, you can say we're friends, and then he's like, uh, and then Diamond's like, did that make you feel better, or is that good, and he's like, eh, or is that, are you happy, and he's like, eh, not really, <laughs> and then here we have Foss, uh, um, just as they are. I'm gonna be able, like diamonds sneaking over the sides. It's the book, the just artwork is very interesting in this book. But yeah, we have Foss in all their uh, very mentally stableness. Uh, here's a, here's one of Acnea. Um, there's a bunch of the plants in the background. It's interesting how like the plants and stuff make a pattern. Or something. Like they're very repetitive, but they still look different. The artwork is just so good. We love Ichikawa's artwork. Here's Foss in a snow globe. This one's just kind of goofy. Just because it's it's broken Foss and broken Foss pieces all over and it's a snow globe. I'd love to see an actual like real life recreation of that. It would just, it's just kind of funny. And then it says Foss on the thing. Um, here's one of Antarcticite. And again, there's flowers in the back. Um, I think Ichikawa likes drawing plants. Um, in the other art book, uh, she drew a lot of plants, like, more human, like, pl like, humans with plant heads. I believe that's probably part of the other work that, that she was working on, but, uh, she's really good at drawing plants, and I am not, so it's kind of, so it's nice to see that, because, obviously, the Hosek Mikuni is a lot more focused on, uh, the rock people, the cool rock people. Anyway. So here we have, like, the desk of, like, probably the person who worked on the Moon Gems clothing. And you see all these pearls, because that's one thing that the lore book, do I have the lore book? This lore book talks about is, uh, it talks about how, like, pearls are just so a part of Lunarian society, because they can, they basically, uh, like making, like, artificial pearls. And they say that it's be very rare to make an artificial pearl as big as an eye and so um that was like a cool note in comparison to Foss like what they gained from the Lunarians 
it just shows that the book putting emphasis on how important pearls are and how important that just makes um boss getting the eye like more like impactful to how the story is and why like them getting a part of that says that they're part lunarian like it's just very interesting lore wise that way but anyway i i love the i love the moon characters like the moon gems outfits they're all just so cool but i i like this desk how it has like the uh different characters in here this is probably like the necklace that uh yellow wears oh and i think these are also their um materials rock uh so very cool um yeah sorry i'm still looking at it they hear like the pleats that are probably going to put in and, oh yeah and this is the pleats for the the sleeve um it's just all these tiny details are very cool uh, we got a jumble of random people uh arms and legs on the side interesting um we have a cassette fun and then foss is a cassette player or something um it's interesting to have Foss as a bunch of We have Foss all smashed, and then we have a brutile there. Diamond and Fort. Cute. Um, sad. Uh, <laughs> this is also a cute comic. There's not really that much Japanese. Oh, let's see, what does this say? Um, oh, Showtime. That's what that says. Um, and so I guess it's just a board showing off what, like, Bort has trained the jellyfish uh with with cinnabar uh which is just very very cute um uh, i don't know what i don't know what the sound effect is it's probably something someone in the comments can probably tell me what the sound effect is uh well i forgot what that's called it has a word in japanese uh they're like onomatopoeias but there's i think there's a specific word for them in in japanese anyway um anyway cool fun little comic next page is just a long shot of cinnabar walking on the beach and I, I just love these full spreads like this is a very simplistic full spread but it's just like cool to see just how small cinnabar is and then the vastness of darkness that is this um with this one this is uh people's names hemineftite someone's name and then we have melon and um they're basically saying like uh i believe this is like foss betrayed us or something uh or foss is never coming back or i think i think it's like foss betrayed us or something and then they're like kind of she kind of she sad sad uh see what they know kind of um, oh yeah it's like i don't think about it and then the melon distracts them with a with a rare flower and then they follow the flower and then this is saying like everyone won't come back uh and then they're like um hopeless or hopeless um well not anyway. i don't want to think about this anymore ah and then the rare uh, butterfly and then they follow it uh just kind of cute showing their personalities and stuff they don't really they really do not get that much screen time at all but you know they are characters that exist and uh it kind of just shows that they're sad that like the other gems have gone, but they're just kind of just living their lives, you know. Um, here we have uh, Foss again <laughs> as like an action figure or something, uh, equipped with all of their lovely things. There, I don't know if there is an Nenroid of Foss. I haven't looked, but like, <laughs> it'd be funny if there ever was like an Nenroid of Foss, and you can switch all their pieces out to be like any of the other forms of Foss. Although some of those forms would be very hard to do, but <laughs> yeah um interesting it took me forever to be able to figure out what this was saying um i believe i could still be wrong i believe this is just foss's name because at first i was i didn't even realize that it was spelling out something and i was like oh wait no there that's like the that's like oh and that's like ara i i it's like e i think foss i think this is saying foss's name like fossufo furaito or something it's just very hard to read yeah like that's the pro. It's just very hard to read with the, that. Uh, and Foss is making such a happy expression on their face, you know? Um, these are the gems of the sleepover. I don't... This could be Sven? I don't know if that's how they say their name. I say that every time. That's Daya, obviously. Uh, Obsidian, yeah. Um, and then we have the moon gems down here. What does this say? 
I think it says power in the English. It's just kind of cuts cut off from the spine or something. Uh, and those are all the moon gems with uh, that person. I forgot their name, I'm going to be honest. I'm sorry, I don't know every single Kindy by, like no Kindy by heart. I will try better. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty, uh, okay, I'm pretty confident now that this is just Floss's name. I was wondering what that was. And then the next one. Oh, yes, this page. So this came out of 10, and it's interesting because it has the spine of 10 right here, as if this could have also been, like, a cover for a book. Uh, which is probably what it's going for with the Jose no Kuni here and this one here. And so it says, like, uh, this is, like, um, what the... So this is, like, um, can they become better friends or something like that? I'm very much paraphrasing. No direct insights in here. Um, and this, I'm so bad at pronouncing some of their names. This is blues. This is, um, Topaz. I don't remember what color they go with, but this is, I think this is Topaz. I could be wrong. Tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. This is, um, their name starts with a CH. I don't know how to pronounce their name. I just always am like, oh yeah, the character whose name starts with a CH every time. Um, I'm pretty sure this is Peridot's partner that they lost. This is... Sven's? If that's how they say their name? S-P-E-N-E? -E? Uh, this is Sven's uh, partner that they lost, and this is Alexandrite's partner that they lost, I'm pretty sure. Um, and so this is just talking about how uh, Topaz wanted to try and get uh, these two characters to be better friends. And it says that this is a time before possible light, um, in that uh, it's in the same obviously timeline but it's just way before um and so topaz tr is trying to get them to become better friends uh by having them have like a shared like diary or something and blues us doesn't want to do it but uh they're surprisingly really good at it is what, what this says um yeah i'm sorry i just don't i don't even want to try to attempt to say their names i guess i could but yeah this is a really cool page. It's mainly darkness and then a little bit of Foss's gold that's filling onto the next page and then just their eye, I guess. Uh, that also could be Alexander's eye? I don't know. Okay. This is kind of like... I love the coloring for this one. But this is a Foss and uh, all of the people and they're happy and nothing ever bad happens in this story and it's all happy. And... um. Karen Gorm's on the moon. Uh, are these, is that supposed to be Dyer? I don't know. Uh, we have like the moon gems farther in the back and then the earth gems farther in the front and a Foss in the middle because Foss causes no problems for the main character and they're, they're good. Nothing bad happens. And it's all fun and games and nothing ever bad happens to the main character. Um, so here we had just have like a comic with uh, Karen Gorm. I almost forgot their name. I don't know how I did that. See, that's why I'm wondering if the, the book goes this way, because all the comics are read this way, uh, presumably. Uh, I presume all the comics are read this way, that's how I've been reading them. Um, yeah, this is just, uh, like, them Karen Gorm playing with the dog, and uh, this is uh, Acmeo saying, like, oh yeah, I'm back, you know. Um, yeah, next page. <laughs> and this is a nice little wallpaper of all the gems. There's ghosts. Uh, ghost. There's amethyst. There's I don't know who this character is. I don't think that's pop. Is that pot? That's that's not Pat, is it? No, it is Pat. Pad Paracha because it's the socks. You can tell it's Pad Paracha because of the socks. I think. Um, who else? Yeah, there's Zircon. Uh, there's a lot of characters. They repeat. Uh, all very cool. We love all the characters in this series. Uh, yep. We have Antarcticite. Um, yeah, that's Antarcticite. Antarcticite with the cool, uh, full page spread again, black and white, very nice. Um, with this one, uh, with this one, it's Peridot and Zircon, I believe that's Peridot, and the Nefti, Neftite, I believe that, I don't know how to say it, anyway, anyway, okay, so, Peridot is saying, like, oh, like, this is basically them saying, like, oh, you must feel bad with, like, uh, Benito, like, leaving and going to the moon, and they don't know when they're, all, you know, saying, like, they, you know, you're gonna be sad about that, and then after he's about to say something, kind of, like, not really, is that, is that then, uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, 
or uh Durkan's like stop don't talk about that um and then it's like oh yeah my bad because they're like oh yeah but if you really want to talk about it anytime we'll open up like if it's going to be hard for them to like talk about it that sort of thing and then <laughs> after i was like not really that's me um and then they're like really like you come to us if you have anything that you want to talk about but they keep interrupting whenever enough tries to talk about it and after that goes really um anyway or nefty i don't know what i was saying okay um here's another comic i don't know what that says um my knowledge of kanji is gone uh anyway the this is karen gorm comic um this is karen gorm with uh i think the person who makes all of karen gorm's fashion uh and so you see here like all their different fashion styles uh another one on the moon with barbeta and acnea and uh and, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah I, I bet these are the two, um, or at least, um, they are a clothing designer that's probably mentioned in this book. Um, and then here we have a comic with Obsidian. Um, for this one, they're basically like, oh man, I wonder what Obsidian's, like, uh, dreaming about or something. And then, uh, you get to see, uh, I don't know exactly what they're saying. I did not translate these that well. I don't know if there's a translation for this one on the wiki. There might not be. I don't remember. But uh, yeah, it's like, they're like, oh, I wonder what, like, Obsidian's, like, dreaming about. Obsidian says something. They're like, ah, just a dream, just a dream. Obsidian's dreaming. Um, uh, demo, email. They're like, ah, oh, it's fine. Um, and they're like, yeah, it's a dream, it's a dream. Uh, I don't know what Obsidian's in here. That's probably going to make it more of a punchline. But yeah. Uh, that's this page. If anyone wants to translate it better in the comments, go ahead. I'm not really focused on translation right now. Uh, here's one of Karen Gorm on the moon, kind of jumping. I forget that the moon's gravity is probably all off, especially because the moons are, like, different sizes, too. Because uh, we kind of just see the characters acting normally there. But, yeah. Karen Gorm going for a jump. Here's Foss in the grass. Because Foss in the grass is a constant thing in this series. And, um boss in the grass looking up at the sky at the sun and in dismay at how they will become and showing up in the same place that they are at the last you know casually casual foss things just being sitting down in the grass sitting down in the grass for a really long time uh sitting in the grass for a couple thousand years anyway so here's a here's a, more artwork i like how this is like oh, such saturated colors and like the highlights are with like other colors too um, it just looks really cool. Also, like, a bubble aesthetic, too. <laughs> In contrast, then there's just this ominous shot of Congo. This is, um, the, this is actually the page, uh, this is in, uh, which chapter is it in? Uh, I just read this chapter, because I reread volume 12. It's in volume 12. Um, this is the one with, uh, if it's in volume, I'm not gonna try and guess the chapter never. It's in the 90s. Um, but this is when, uh, they're talking about how Congo was placed under strict, like, uh, restrictions, and that's where this panel is from, and so it's cool to see it co colored, like the game pieces, and then the doggos on the side too, and then the next page. Oh yeah, this one. Cool flowers. Anyway, this comic... I don't like this one. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I'm, I think it's like a pretty good sense that a lot of people don't like Acme and Karen Gorm's relationship in the story, but this just kind of makes it worse, or this comic right here. Because, um, it kind of just, like, this is, I think this is where one of the chapters leave off, where, um, Acme is like, let's get married, you know? And Karen Gorm, and it just leaves off there, like, and then, you know, the next chapter is like, them getting married or something. But here, it, like, extends it, and Karen Gorm's like, what's marriage? It's fine, I'll do it, but, like, what is it? And then Acme just refuses to explain, uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then, <laughs> then he's, like, not explaining at all. Anyway, I don't like that. <laughs> it it kind of is like we're like makes sense for their relationship, but yeah, it's based. This one is basically Acme being like, "Let's get married." Karen Gorm's like, "I have no idea what that is, but sure, because you're saying it." And then Acme is like, "Oh, okay, cool. Glad, glad that you accepted. I'm not. I'm proceeding to not tell you what it is or what it represents or what it means or anything." Uh, anyway. Uh, here's a lovely, uh, lovely picture of the sky and dying Foss uh, on the bottom, because uh, that's what we like to see here, uh, with all the gold dripping out of them as they extend towards the moon. Um, 
And then here's the comic. Here's a, a like sketch comic. I think this is more like an early concept comic for Bort. Um, I tried to translate it myself. I think there is a translation somewhere online. I've heard that it was translated, but uh, I haven't read a, like a more someone who knows what they're doing translate it. But this is a comic on board. Again, I don't know where, which way it's supposed to be read. Assumably, because it goes this way. Assumably, it's read this way, so that means it starts over here. Uh, I don't, I didn't want to take the effort of translating all this Japanese. Uh, anyway, um, so here, but here's this page if you want to look at it. Um, yeah, if you want to translate the Japanese, go have, go ahead, have fun. Um, so here's a comic of Bort. I think they're talking about how Bort's weapon, like, is either an extension for their hair or is, like, made out of their hair or something like that. And then, um, they show here, like, Bort's hair, so I'm guessing it got cut, and they're just talking about how it got cut and how, like, that happened. Um, and I believe Foss had something to do with it, so Foss is like, uh, oh yeah, am I bad about it, or something like that. Uh, and then they talk a bit about Bort's hair here, and then, uh, I don't know what's happening here entirely, but, um, like, Bort is, like, Trying to fight Sensei. I don't know exactly what's happened. I can't read it. Anyway, um, and Foss is here too, because I was wondering, because like if Bort's hair is cut here, I was wondering if this was like after the moon, but um, it also could just be because this is an early one that it's just getting out like some of Bort's character. It's interesting to see like Bort's dynamic with um, Congo because we don't get to see that a lot actually in the story, but we see like Bort kind of fights Congo a bit here. And then, uh, like, Congo later is like, oh, it's okay, you know, or something like that, like, here. Um, and Bort's all, like, nice and, yeah. Uh, anyway. Yes, yeah, so these are those pages. It could be read the other way, I don't know. Uh, y yes. I guess it might make sense the other way. I don't know. Anyway, if, if any of you have more knowledge on this comic or know where a translation can be found, or if you have a better translation, you can leave it in the comments or let me know. Um, but yeah, that's that comic with Bort. And then finally, there's the sticker page um, of the Fantastic Stickers. This one kind of looks like the eye that like Foss gets given. This was, this was given for 10, right? So that wasn't a thing yet at the time of this and this. But this looks like the because the eye kind of like looks like that the one that congo gives to foss spoilers by the way i didn't give a spoiler warning i'm sorry to anyone who's watching this and hasn't read the entire series that sounds like a you problem um <laughs> but that kind of looks like the eye that congo gives foss is what i was saying kind of like upside down maybe in the other sh in like a teardrop shape but yeah there's also just a lot of eyes in here goshen new goshenite i'm guessing that's who this is of riding the dog um, they, they are, like, an underrated character. They're barely seen. Makes sense why they're underrated. But it's just kind of funny that they, like, accidentally came to the moon. Again, spoilers. Sorry to any of you who haven't read all of the series and is watching this video. I'm sorry. But, like, Goshenite, like, literally just came with Foss to the moon. Foss didn't even think that they were coming. And then they just, like, dipped, made Lunarian friends, and existed. And then they were good and mentally happy. And that did not happen for a lot of the other characters. Anyway, uh, yeah, so there's Love, Freedom, and Hella stickers, and Karen Gorm on the Moon, and all that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh yeah, that's just the sticker page thing. There, there's also, like, like, a sketches of clouds in the back of it. And again, I just like how reflective the surface of this book is. It's very nice, very cool. Uh, anyway, that's this book. I'm going to go over the other art books in separate videos. And thank you for watching. I, that was just me randomly talking about this book for a bit. But hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.